Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, and I've done nothing but orthodontics now for the last about 40, 45 years. Uh, and I want to pass some of this on to whoever's interested in it. I've come up with a lot of innovative ideas, I think, and uh, they work. I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society. Now this is a organization of general dentists and pedodontists who have their sole purpose is really teaching other general dentists and pedodontists, of course, and any other dentists that are concerned or interested in studying orthodontics. And so this is an excellent organization. We have our boards that you have to go through or you need to go through to uh, really learn orthodontics and uh, this organization has excellent uh, journal we have our annual meetings and we have a lot of good dedicated people teaching orthodontics to dentists all over the country so anyway we'll get into what I'm going to talk about this morning is uh, class two, division two, both sides of the mouth. And uh, this is an interesting subject. You've got a lot of patients that I want to show, and so we'll probably break this up into two different uh, videos. And so anyway, I'm going to start off here with a young lady that we uh, did s several years ago. In fact, we started this, I think, in 12 of 87. And uh, she was a daughter of a pastor of the church that I attended. And I did this just out of gratis and was a very satisfying patient uh, and had an excellent result on it. Now, this young lady's got some short roots on her teeth that I'll show later on. Uh, I don't know why they were short, but uh, anyway, they were to start with, and I'll show that on panorexes before we start. Now, frequently they have a pretty low angle where they bite down like this, and the, <coughs> the lower front teeth uh, will come right up close to the gingival tissue. Sometimes they're actually up in the gingival tissue. We'll show on uh, various cases as we go through here. Now, the facial profile is kind of dished in, and this is a not a real low angle case, but it's certainly not a high angle case, and we're going to be able to go through here and open the bite some while we do this and it'll settle back down and the facial structure looks good. You try never to take out any teeth on a class 2 division 2 type uh, face. So as you look at it from the front, the frequently the upper centrals are tucked in, the upper laterals kind of lap out over the centrals and they look extremely crowded, but uh, when you get in and open it up and level it out, uh, there's usually plenty of room in there for the teeth. So I'm gonna go through these pretty fast. We've got a lot of pictures here to show in these cases. And uh, you can see where the upper anterior teeth almost close over the lower anteriors. Uh, there's very little space left in there, and then your laterals kind of lap, they kind of come out over, and then your cuspids are usually crowded out. And they look pretty bad, uh, but they're not difficult cases if you really know how to do this and level them out. And you look at it and say, well, I've got a pretty bad class two problem here. But when you raise these teeth up, and you go down with the lower teeth here, in other words, you open the bite, 
the jaw frequently in class 2 division 2 cases will move forward and a lot of your class 2 problem will just uh, go away by flattening out the arches now frequently the jaw will come further forward than the head of the condyle back here looks like in other words you're you're got the fossa and the head of the condyles in here, something like, well, not like that, and the disc or strap is over it. And maybe the condyles back in here to start, it'll move up to here, which is not very far. And the jaw may move forward sometimes a quarter of an inch, you know. Uh, but the condyle won't move that far. So you wonder, well, how in the world did that happen? Well, the condyle kind of tilts backwards you know, when it goes, when the jaw kind of goes out there where it wants to, the condyle will kind of tilt backwards a little bit, and that gives you some more length to it. And also your gonial angle down here, which is pretty small, it will increase, and the jaw kind of flatten out back here and make it come further forward. So that's uh, kind of the explanation for how the jaw will actually move further forward then the condyle uh, appears. You can x-ray the joints and you can find that pretty well uh, established that uh, actually the jaw will come on out further and yet the condyle will be in the faucet, will have moved forward slightly but not all that much. So the neck of the condyle tilts back or allows the head of it to tilt back and the gonial angle down there gets larger and so that lengthens the jaw and so some people think they grew to the jaw but they, we don't uh, okay here it is on both sides now looking across here we've still got a deciduous tooth here and one over here and these teeth kind of go up and go almost square across like that and we'll come in in a very short time. These teeth will move out. It's just astonishing how fast they move like that. Now, we'll look at the lower arch, and uh, they're crowded. And, you know, we have no qualms in expanding this and moving the cuspids back. If you bring the roots back, I've not had any problem with them not staying. Of course, we've got... Uh, no deciduous teeth over on this side, so you don't gain anything here. You've got one, and you'll gain a little bit of space in there. You take the size of this bicuspid over here and put it over there. And in other words, you're going to gain about this much space on this side, but it's not going to be enough to solve this, where these teeth are going to move down and out when you go in to open this up. Now, when I look at it from this side, your class two problem over here doesn't look all that bad at all, yet it's a class two division two. But this is not, this is, uh, this jaw didn't have to come forward very much to be class one, really, to put it down that way. Now, if you take this decision's tooth out, the molar usually moves forward and takes up part of this space, but if you can get in here and get the space before the molar moves forward and get your upper bicuspid back here, then it may hold it back in that line. That's not a big problem with class two division two. You can usually correct your class two problem quite easily. Now, on the other side, it's still not a bad class 2 on this side, either one, either. So, we go in and it just looks bad from the front. You go in here and look like, my gosh, you can't possibly put all these teeth into that arch. But you can put the teeth in there. They will, they'll just go a lot easier than you think. Now, here it is. Uh, we actually took the records a good time before we actually started the, the case. This is, all right, this is the, when we started the case. 
it was 8 6 of 90 now when we started it I had you know just doing this gratis for these for this pastor and his family and they're very fine people this is a very nice young lady she was a very very good conscientious, conscientious patient now we came in on 8 6 of 90 and I put a flexible wire this there's a kind of a night no wire it's kind of a twisted type thing made out of about three smaller much smaller wires I think it would be about a 17 to 5 night no wire now you could have used nowadays we probably go in there with a night no wire That's, this is not a night this is a wildcat wire excuse me uh, now the night no can do this very good to it you can bend loops and things in night no wire also now this is an intruding wire which we have shown cases and stuff how to build it and what it does now this wire would go way up like this and come down on the other side we pulled it down and hooked it to these front teeth right in here so it's constantly trying to pick these teeth up now we had absolutely nothing on the lower except I did ban the lower six year molars the same day that we put this in now this wire I don't think I activated it that much but I put it down and it was pretty flexible it's a rectangular wire fairly small rectangular wire though and just piggybacked it over the arch down here I tied it here and I think a couple of places in here we tied that wire to the to the teeth usually you tie it to the top teeth I tied here to keep from popping over there now let's look at it this is 8 6 of 90 same thing over here that's just another view of it where we had it tied right there and right there and uh, nothing else on there and so the wire was out here somewhere we pulled it down and it's trying to pick these teeth up in fact it does very efficiently pick them up okay eight six of nine this is just showing we hadn't left off if she had I put a little this was rubbing her lip I got another little uh, pearl here that you take a piece of cotton just a little dab of cotton and take a piece of wax and flatten it out and put it on about half that uh, actually you've flattened this wax out excuse me and then you put a little dab of cotton over the wax then you lay it over on each other and so you've got a cotton sandwich in other words you've got the wax like this with the cotton inside of it and uh, you can take this little cotton sandwich I call them and put them down on a bracket now if you don't have the cotton in there the wax will go right the bracket will go right through the wax after a while but if you got cotton in there it won't go through there and the wax will keep the cotton on there so you could put a little cotton sandwich over anything that's irritating the lips and stuff like that that's a little thing worth remembering and I forget where I got that but uh I'm sure somebody told me that over the years and I've been using it a lot and it's worth knowing about. So anyway, we put that on 8, 6 of 90. Looking at it from the front, you can see how this intruding wire and then you've got your wildcat wire in here and this is flat across here and let's see what happens here in just a matter of a few weeks. All right, we saw this. That's the bottom arch. We had absolutely nothing on it at all other than, than the bands on the molars right here. That's all we put on 
on the bottom boards to start off with. So here we are again. All right, here is 911 of 90. Now that was 86 of 90, and this is 911. So it's about a month and five days later. Let's look at what happened here. All right, this this arch wire that was up here is still activated, still working on it, but it picked those teeth up quite a bit. Now as it intrudes these teeth, it doesn't shove them down in the bone. The alveolar bone kind of moves with the teeth and it raised these teeth up all across here in a month. Now it actually moved the teeth out away from the lower anterior, as I'll show you in a, another slide here. This is the way it was when we started. These teeth were very close to this right here. This was actually almost straight across like that. Now after a month and five days, it looked like that. In other words, I, I stuck a mirror down under and took a picture of this. And uh, these teeth have moved out away from the other teeth several millimeters. I'm going to go back and show you that where they were and then where it went to. Now, the teeth were not extremely sore or bothering this young lady at all. Now, these teeth were short rooted and I know that to start with. I've told you that so they moved easier than they normally would under similar circumstances but I have no problem with teeth with regular long roots opening the bite up like that, which we will show you on many cases as we go. So this intruding arch was leveling that out. Now, if you're not using intruding arches, which during near just a few of the people in our association do and very few dentists use them, but you're missing a real opportunity. Uh, so. What we do, we put a triple tube on the motors and the upper motors, and the lower we put a double tube. With your conventional tube, it's convertible, and here would be the tube that we put the intruding arch or lip bumpers or various things in. And here's a headgear tube and the conventional, that's your auxiliary tube that your intruding arch is inserted into. So I'm gonna suggest if you're not using these triple and double tubes on your molars, that is a big asset, a big help. And <clears throat> it's hard to go in here with a flexible wire that you can engage and get these teeth to move that much in that length of time. And it did not damage these teeth. I'll show you this girl years later. It brought this out. Now that's in, in other words, you can open the blooming bite with intruding arches while you're thinking about it with just a single arch wire in there. Now you say these new arch wires that have this big bow in them, you know, they do some good, but they also sink the molars and they're not near as efficient as the intruding wire. So here, look at it from the front. You remember this was almost straight across and now it's got a nice curvature to it. Now this has happened in a month's time. So uh, I want you to do good orthodontics. I'm not interested in treating hundreds and thousands of patients. I want to treat the ones I do really good. And I hope that uh, people who are learning this or taking this information will be dedicated to good orthodontics. And I'm not talking about this fast braces stuff that's, to me, is ridiculous. Uh, maybe what some people want, okay, but the people that are doing it don't know anything about orthodontics, and that's why they're doing it. Now you take, the instance, the profile, and now the profile is straightening out, you see, so we, brought those teeth out, that's going to make the facial structure look 
a lot better. Now here it is a little further down the line. This is January of 91, so we've had some time go by here. And now we're in about a 1725 a rectangular wire in a 018 bracket slot. I like the 018s and I put about a 1725 arch wire in there. That's, in other words, it's a thousandths clearance in there so you don't get the full torque that you would get with an 018 and an 018 bracket. But I know that and so I had torque to them if I need, need it. So We've got a decent looking set of teeth here and it hasn't taken all that long to do it. Now we bring it up and line these teeth up and you want to keep the tilt in the teeth. In other words, you want them all t tilting back and the one over here going to the other direction and your torque on these lower teeth. See we've got, we came back and put an intruding arch on this brought these teeth down too so we level this arch out and we put a little curve in this one right here and just a wee bit in the, up in the lower. Now here it is in the 10 of 91 and we've been in here for some time and got the thing almost completed before she got her second buy in up here and we've got our Twavier molars and everything lined up quite uh, good at this point. Now we kind of level the two arches out and we get the right amount of upper and lower torque and the right amount of upper and lower uh, bite closure and extension so, uh, of the teeth over and we try to get everything lined up as good as we can in class one relation and try to get all these six keys of Andrews into the case if we possibly can. Now these are little single brackets and for rotating they're not very good. We had to put wedges under them. The brackets with little wings on them I think are better. I quit using them because I didn't have good sealants back then and I would get decay or decalcification under the wings. So we went to these tiny little single brackets. I think I put out by American Orthodontics and I'm not pushing any particular company. But here we are lined up and we've got our second buys in now pretty good. And this is three of 92. This is kind of a fuzzy uh, Panorex, but it's the only one I took, and this was a long time, well, a good time before we started. This, I believe, is 86, right in here. And you can see these permanent teeth had very little root on them right there. Now, I'll take another Panorex later on. Here's one in 1988. And you see, we hadn't touched this lady other than I just took some pictures of her. And I uh, drew on the x-ray. I used to always, well, I had an old x-ray, I'd have a bite too. So you can see it's pretty much a class one, just a slight class two problem in the motors with the class two division two problem out front. And I drew a line down there and watched these roots, trying to watch them. But it looked like they had developed and just dubbed off. And uh, you can see that. Now as far as I can tell, years later there's no change in those roots. I'm sure they have some, some root loss. This is another fuzzy picture and I'm still watching these roots but we're into the braces now and we're leveling it all out and this is another looks like we took some pretty sorry pictures of x-rays here but the roots didn't grow anymore for sure but as far as I could tell they're still just about the same length that they were to start with and here's the little arch the crowding that we had here's the facial structure 
it looks like you see this coming through there we've opened the bite a little bit and we flattened the facial or rounded the facial profile out where it was uh, kind of dished in a little here we are go we're opening some space for that lateral right there and I'm going to run through this pretty fast we got a lot to cover in this length of time so here we are with the teeth pretty well finished now the ladies the young lady's grown up and she functions good and the vertical height of the face is excellent the profile is still very straight but not dished in that's a bad shot I got of her but that's back when we had film to do all this you couldn't retake them now the smile is good the coverage of the teeth is good and this is January of 93 this is several years well it took quite a time there before those teeth all erupted into the mouth I wasn't in any real mad hurry to get the case finished we put her in an upper retainer still had the braces on the bottom and uh, I'm going to show it to show her to you later on that's three uh, 93 that's one beautiful thing about brackets you can have your molars you have to close a little more space back there where the bands uh, are on which is not a big problem if you know how to do it uh, here we uh, now I like to go in and bond a three to three on before we actually take the archway out at all I may have cut it off back here and then bonded this later then but I don't do that now uh, everything looks pretty good and you can bring people back and show them bring the parents back or you can show the patient if it's an adult or something okay this is what it's going to look like back when we had bands on there we could not do that you had so much space you had to close all that space you lost a lot of your torque and everything so you had to over torque and do a lot of things and then hope to god that it looked decent when you closed all the space okay here we are uh this was 96 of 90 and she's okay this is the age was 10 years old at this point 1987 and we did this reduction see of the teeth that we showed to help bring those lower anteriors in but it didn't wasn't sufficient to give us room enough but uh, we helped get the lower teeth lined up a little bit here now if you haven't learned how to do this this is a good thing we call it a slicing technique if you don't use a disc you have to take a long burr to do that and do the pulp otomies and I've done a few thousand of these pulp otomies on vital teeth and never have had one of them blow up but that saves the arch length in there now the teeth came on in and the teeth dubbed off again I mean, we saw this earlier on and here's the x-ray in 92 they still may have lost a little more but not much I can't tell it now we were crowded back here in the back so we recommend removal of the wisdom teeth facial structure looks good the smile looks good and this is 93 and the teeth we've taken everything off that's about as good a class one as you're going to find and uh, looks like the midline's almost on I don't worry about that as long as I've got them well interdigitated this is not perfect see this tooth over here is better than this one over on this side if that was in probably the midline would be back over this side right there so but it's darn good you've got most all the keys of occlusion in here and the upper 93 look like that and we bonded the three to three on the bottom here she is in 97 I believe she's grown up now 
their facial structures hold it. It's good. They smile like it. And this is 99, 1999. The midline is still off that little bit. This cusp is still out here. This one's better. So that's pretty stable like it is right there. Now we look on this side, it looks, if, you, if, I, if I could do all this good, I wouldn't be uh, grabbing about things. You know, perfect alignment, 99, that's moved out a hair, but uh, that's pretty darn good. Now, here we were to start with, and uh, that's what it was. Let me go back, and that's what it ended up here. So I was uh, proud of that, and that's, we started in 1980. Well, I started seeing her back in 1986. And so you don't get through these cases real quick. Now, I've kept up with this young lady, and her teeth are still lined up, and they're still real good. I haven't seen her now in a good many years, but uh, uh, anyway, she's still in good shape. Now, here's another class two, division two case. It's got the joint, the jaw trapped back very bad. And so she's got a temporal mandibular joint problem. And she's a very pretty uh, young lady. And the, the jaw is actually back further than it wants to be. If you relax this and let her close, her bottom teeth would come out in front of these teeth. That's where the jaw wants to be. If you put it where it wants to be, in the vast majority of them, they'll quit hurting, or they just don't hurt when they, the jaw closes where it wants to be, rather where the teeth want it to be. So anyway, I took this young lady and we said, well, we're going to have to put you in a splint. And then I, after I had talked them into doing a splint, which was, was good. I realized I was going to have to stick the lower front teeth out in front of the upper front teeth. And I said, if this is not hurting you too much, let me start the orthodontics first. And you see the same thing we had on the other case right here. So they said, okay, we'll do that. Now this is a much worse class two. You see this cusp, it needs to go back here, this molar needs to go back here, this back cuspid here, and this one there. This is a real full-blown class two, division two case, and this tooth is crossed by it a little bit back in there. Now you look at the other side, it's almost a mirror image of that. This tooth will hit here and go into place. That's no big problem, but now I'm gonna have to correct the class two. Here. Now to correct her TMJ problem, I'd have to put her front teeth out here somewhere before she stopped, would stop hurting. I said, well, let me do a little work on it first. And I had sold them on the splint. We didn't rob them. We, I think I charged about $700 to treat the TMJ problem and the splint and everything. And uh, the upper arch is rather narrow in here, you see, and we're gonna to wanna to round this thing out uh, when we finish up with, you can see about what we did, and we're gonna to have to bring these teeth out up here. And so the bottom looked pretty good, you know, it's, it's lined up pretty good, maybe a excess curve was fee in it, but there it is, 1987, and a deep bite in class two division two and it's a class two molar and everything down the line. So we want to bring these teeth out right up here. So she allowed me to go ahead and start the orthodontics before we did the TMJ stuff. So anyway, I put the little wildcat wire in and tucked it back in like this and it's real flexible. You can now we would use a 016 nye tie or something like that to do that. And we put this intruding wire on the front of it 
here. And that's to pick the thing up, pick the anterior teeth up. Now these teeth had regular roots on them. The bottom looks really good. This is before gloves. <laughs> Somebody look at that and say, oh my God, you know, people lived back then anyway. And we didn't have any infection from orthodontics, I don't know. So anyway, I put the intruding arch on, it would go up here and I brought it down. And uh, somebody at some seminar I was giving, they said, well, what did you put that little deal in the arch bar for? And I was just pulling their leg and I said, well, you know, we make that curve in here, the electric current developed in here causes these this bone to move and uh, and uh, it's a real new thing a breakthrough in tooth movement and have them <laughs> going on about that actually I just made the wire too long and I made it shorter <laughs> by putting that little loop in it it had nothing to do with the treatment of the teeth pull it down and, and uh, tied it on top of those teeth. I tied it with elastic chain, you see, and I was picking those up, and I forget what day, okay, we tied that in on 12-28 uh, of 87. So that was just two days before 87 ended, 12-28, or maybe it's three days, I don't remember. Exactly. But anyway, we let her go and I got her back in. And this 1228 had nothing on the bottom and anything. Just getting this out of the way so we could come back and put a splint in to bring her jaw far. All right, on 315 of 88 now, that's January and February and half of March, so it's about two and a half months later, came back and I just put a, I'd seen her before this, of course, and we came back and just put an arch wire in there to pick that up a little bit more, straighten it out. And the TMJ problem had gone away. Now, and oh, honest me, I had already sold her this plant for $700 and I, well, I've got to use a splint on her. I, I, you're treating a TMJ problem with orthodontics, but you can't do the TMJ stuff for nothing. So anyway, I charged her $700 to get rid of the TMJ problem. I put her in a splint and brought her out jaw out and it finished correcting that a little bit better. Now you remember we were class two back here I mean, this this tooth here was way out here. Now, this bicuspid hadn't moved very far, but this tooth, of course, we've got an expanding wire, it's pushing it back, and we've corrected a lot of the class two and haven't even put a class two elastic or anything on the case. I still haven't got the lower opened up, so it'll come forward even more when you get the lower leveled out, you see nothing on the bottom. Now this moved from about here's where the teeth were and they opened up that much you see but the lower teeth are still bumping the backs of the upper teeth here holding the jaw back uh, further. That's two and a half months after we started and the jaw joint problem went away. That's a kind of a fuzzy picture on the other side. Or at five of 88, I put her in a splint and brought her teeth out to where she was totally comfortable hitting in that splint. We went in that for a couple of three months, something like that, and then we had to take it out and go ahead. And now I've got to put a little reverse curve in this to bring it down some. So we take the splint out and everything's going good. We don't have any more trouble with the jaw joint and so it went from that to that in uh, two and a half months now by intruding 
You see it cocked this tooth up. It went back some, but the occlusion kept it in fair place. In other words, the force to intrude these teeth came from this molar, but the occlusion kept the molar in pretty good shape, actually. And it opened the space, but it didn't cock that tooth up very much. And then you can only put it in a splint, broader forward, to where we're in a good class one, and then I finished her or started out. And she's a real pretty gal, and she got to going with a guy that her mother wasn't real happy with, and she ended up marrying the guy before we got through with her. We were just, we had whipped the problem. We got her teeth going good. And so she married this boy and moved to a city there in northern Florida. And I had a, one of my good students who was knew this stuff good was in that town. So I sent her to him to finish up and I'm sure she ended up with a good set of teeth. Now you've still got to raise this up and come down with this and get this in contact back here in the back of the mouth. And I've got her closing forward where she wants to close, where the jaw wants to be, and the joint problem went away. So here we've still got the, I can put a curvous V in this upper one and raise it a little with just the arch wire. Down here we've got some in the lower arch wire, but we put this intruding wire, which is down low. So it's bringing this down. It also tips them out. It expands the teeth when you're putting that in. Now if you don't want to expand it, you tie it back, back here. And it doesn't expand it, but you have to watch getting too much torque when you're intruding out here. So if you do, you have to put your rectangular wire in a slot and put reverse torque in the anterior teeth, and you can take them down however you want to. Really, you can put them exactly where you want to. So here it is in 1988, and it's pretty well leveled out. We're chewing back here now, and we've got these teeth up there pretty good and she closes her jaw out there where it's comfortable and everything lined up pretty good. Only problem, she married this guy and moved off on me and so I never did get any slides or anything back but uh, anyway that was, was a good case. We had it pretty well whipped when we uh, actually when she left. Now here's a case number three. I may have shown you this in uh, uh, the intruding arches and everything. This is a lady uh, about 70 some odd years old and uh, one time referred to her as an old lady and I thought well that's stupid. She's a lot younger than I am so <laughs> now I would think of her maybe a young chick you see but anyway she's got a real close bite and the teeth are in a you know mild class two relation to open her edge to edge you've got to open her mouth almost a half inch back here where these teeth came down from here you open up to there it doesn't like much being a half inch so this is a class two division two case a very nice lady. I've known her family and we've worked on a lot of the people in that family and this was January almost the end of January in 04 uh, when we got started on her and the upper teeth you see are tucked in we're going to have to bring that out of course and intrude the upper teeth an awful lot and as you intrude the teeth now they don't shove them up in the bone the bone moves up with them the clinical crown looks very near the same when you get the bite level as it was when you started she had some tori in the mouth and don't get excited over them we just go ahead and let they get real big and if they do you can 
have them taken out. They can just lay this tissue back. Looks like a knot on a log. I remember taking some out on my father while I was in dental school. That was the old time in dental school. They wouldn't let a dental student do that now for love nor money. But I peeled those back and ground them off on my father, who was about 70 some odd years old when I was in dental school, maybe 75, something like that. Now, having this deep bite, you tend to want to get rid of it yourself, so you kind of grind on the teeth. And these teeth are worn off up here. That's just typical of class two, division two in older patients. Now, look up in the, from the back of the mouth, or take your model, take a picture up in here. And uh, this goes along here and then jumps up and comes right up there, jumps back down. These teeth are right up against the roof of the mouth. Have some people actually chew in here the mouth gets real raw and so they're wanting to get it fixed because of that. I'm sure she bites against the gum to some extent. When I take the Panorex like we did with my old Panorex and I love that thing, it registers the motor relationship. You can see the condyles in the fossa at the same time and you see where the lower, the upper teeth come down to here and the lower teeth go up to there. And if I'm going to open that thing up, I'm going to have to open it up. I mean, a lot. And that's easy to do. If you know how to use these intruding arches, you'll have to put a little pad in there. And on a deep bite case, you put your pad up in the front of the mouth, and these teeth erupt toward one another back in here. And, and you level this out, and you give give them an increased vertical dimension on however far these teeth come together back here in the back of the mouth, you see. Uh, and that, on these cases that are, have a low angle, they tend to close down when you get through with them. So you have to put a bite plate on your retainer and have them, everything touch at one spot, and then they'll stay that way as long as they use that retainer. Okay, I don't know if there's any questions you have about this. I'm sorry you can't ask your questions over this video, but I'm going to try to explain a lot of it. Sometimes I uh, cover some three or four times, so I, don't, I want to keep it where you can see it and learn it. And you can go back and forth over this only. You can play it over 50 times if you want to. Now we've opened the bite. I lace these teeth together up here in front. She's got a root canal here, but they didn't cause it because of the doing the orthodontics. Now these teeth came together. You see, they move together. The move, the bone structure goes with them, and these went up. The bone structure goes up here and down here. You see, it's leveling that thing out. The bone. The alveolar bone moves with the teeth. Now the basal bone probably changes to support the alveolar bone. I don't have any way to prove that to you, but uh, where the body moves bone where it's needed. And if you stop needing it, it'll start resorbing it. Just like your astronauts, they go up they got a lot of bone when they come down, they don't have a lot because they didn't need it up there. And their exercise doesn't help. All right, or it helps, but it doesn't solve the whole problem. Now this slipped out of the place. These two cupped areas here should go around these bicuspids. In other words, this pad would be way up in here. And she was a very conscientious patient. She You've got to wear some type of bite plate or you can't put brackets on the blooming teeth. You see, it'll chew them off. Now there's the cephalometric and this is a definite low angle case. It's pulling that jaw back. And as you go in here, this gonial angle will straighten out some and the head of the condyle will kind of tilt back a little further and you'll get the jaw lengthening out here some in most all your class two, division two type cases. So class two problems. 
if you hold a model up there and say, well, I've got so much class two to do, that's not the way to do it. You flatten the blooming arches out where your teeth don't hold the lower jaw back. And now see how much class two you have. And frequently it's not half as much and sometimes it's not. I mean, you don't have any class two when you level them out. So uh, that's something a lot of people don't realize. Okay, we level this out. We've got the tip and everything in the teeth. We put some class two little Kabayashi hooks on here. And <coughs> Maybe they can edit that cough out for me. Okay, we used some class two elastics, but it was not a big problem. But here's the class two elastics in there. We pull back. Here I was keeping this back, rotating maybe this cuspid, bringing it back some of the elastic chain. And the class two elastics, we had just tied on little kabayashi hooks in there. And the tori didn't seem to make any difference in the case at all. Now we, at one time, see we were biting up there pretty close, you need to rotate some more here and bring those out. We're using some tiny twin brackets on the bottom. I don't normally like those things, but these are the ones we like. But but then when you go to rotate a tooth, you gotta push this in. You have to put one of these wedges underneath it and tie it down. It's better that if you ran your tie in from this side and then did your twist over here, you see push this wire down into the bracket and it'll tend to rotate the tooth in that direction to make it go in like that. Now the class two elastics, you need to have it tied on real good for you pulling back here with these, off of these teeth. Now the in, this is the intruding wire. I didn't show it on thinking a picture, so I just laid it up there. Now we put her in a upper holly wraparound retainer. The We put these teeth in as good an inner digitation as we could. We gave these the proper inner incisal angle between the upper and lower teeth. And now the little laterals he had did not fill the space. So you don't sacrifice your, digit, your inner digitation or your anterior teeth to close the space. So we would either build up the tooth or crown them. And these were pretty small laterals, so we ended up crowning those teeth. And this went along. Uh-oh. I uh, must have caught a squirrel outside. I'm going to have to pause this for a minute. If I can find my... Well, I guess we'll have to edit out some of that dog barking. So anyway, we finished this uh, lady out and it's worked real good. And I'll have to get my little mouse going here some another. We had to put some crowns on these laterals because they were too small or else I'd have to sacrifice the inner digitation and the position of my upper centrals. And I'd rather do that than I think uh, one of the main things in finishing is to have them inner digitated really good because they tend to stay there. Uh, the other side looks pretty good. And this is not totally from the side. The upper arch, we put a little bite plate, you see, on the retainer that will hold that bite at that point as long as she stays with this retainer, at least wears it a good bit of the day or night. And uh, then this can 
it'll keep her teeth like this the rest of her life. It's pretty good if you can go in and bond, say, a three to three up above and put some acrylic on it and make little shelves in the backs of your upper anterior teeth for your lower teeth to touch on and that will hold that bite at that uh, height uh, as long as that stays in there. The removable retainer is good as long as they wear it. Okay, we go to the lower and uh, we've got a three to three down there and we have a little problem here, but rather than trying to pull these out of the inner digitation, I'll just leave the gap you can fill that in with some type of filling material or I wouldn't want to crown them just for that but uh, you can leave it open and it won't hurt anything you hardly ever see it alright when you look at it from the side you see this was totally class 2 you see this was coming down over here and it really needs to come down and go into this part of the tooth. So, and this needs to go back there. Now, if we, I hope we got it in there, the other side's a very big class two problem too. Your cuspids need to come way back there. Now, here she is, this is old six. After we've been out of the braces for a while, this is a last uh, November of 06 and uh, the inner digitation still looks quite good at this point and remember this cuspid had to be brought over from there into that place and we'll have a view here showing the comparison of the two the lower this is a little later it's holding good all right, now here is a mirror shot shooting straight in just like we'd be looking at this cuspid right here. And you see where this cuspid is, and this bicuspid, and this one, and the molar. And you see where they had to go to to get to that point. Now this jaw came forward most of this distance without me having to pull it with any kind of class two elastics or anything. And I had to finish it out and get it a little further down there to get it interdigitated properly. And then line these teeth up and then my interdigitation was good and I had to have the lateral teeth built up there to, so that they would fill the gap. Well, you see the little old bitty lateral tooth that's here and it just didn't wasn't big enough to fill that space up. Now look at the other side. We've got these little small laterals and uh, same thing. You see where this tooth is here we had to come over and it's come back all the way. Now we didn't lean the cuspid in there. You've got to put the cuspid in there and line it up with a tilt in it to get it to stay there. Same thing on the bottom cuspids. When you expand them, you got to have the root behind the crown. If you just tilt them out and the root's in front of the crown, then it could come back very easily. Okay, that's finished good. Now to look at the ladies, these two pictures probably show more the, the added vertical length of the face you see and so whatever her molars move together molars and bicuspids back here when we level this bite that increased the vertical height of the face and so she looks better though she's quite thin maybe we all ought to be thin and live longer uh, but the vertical height of the face is greater and it's sitting like that in 07 and she's got a beautiful set of teeth and hopefully she'll have these the rest of her life. Now I'm going to 
finish this. We've got several more cases to do, and I'm going to have it in the second phase of class two, division two. And so I'm going to go to stop the program right now.